Hi friends, in my previous uh, architectural videos, I have covered Azure Archival architecture at very high level. I have seen few questions in the comment section, how we can uh, take other options available or how we can elaborate the ADX architecture. So in this video, I'm going to cover the alternates and at the same time, how we can take it more further on the ADX. So in this um, architecture, I have shown how we can use ADX for the archival from the various uh, data sources like Azure SQL, Azure MySQL, Azure Cosmos DB, no matter what you have the middle, sorry, backend database, from there you can uh, ingest the data to the ADX. So just to further dig more into this architecture let us go to the, the slide so here we are taking the data from all your databases with the help of adf adf is uh, usually used for the data ingestion from the various data sources to adx or azure databricks and a few other options available so for you can either use the adf or if you have any other mechanisms to ingest the data to the adx like maybe you can directly run the queries and uh, push the push the data from um, the database to the ADX. Maybe you can even use the .NET uh, SDKs to push the data. But uh, the best way or mechanism is that ADF as a data factory. You can even uh, run a scheduler on the ADF so that you know the periodical uh, data can be moved from your databases to the ADX. So there are plenty of uh, ways that uh, how you can move the data from your primary databases or transactional databases to the ADX. Uh, in the within the ADX, many people might be getting the doubts how I can save the cost still, right? Because ADX has two type of storages one is warm storage and cold storage uh, under the warm storage in case if you think that you have some kind of uh, transactional data sitting on that on the kind of you know three months old or six months old data still you have to query from your front-end applications then you can make use of the warm storage and in case if you think some data is going to be the legacy kind of data warehouse system right or you know you you don't frequently query the particular data that can be moved to the cold storage any data archival strategy will go with this kind of storages but in this particular architecture adx is actually serving both the purposes like warm storage and cold storage so you have some option called cache under the adx so when you keep the ca uh, Okay, can, can you keep the data under the cache automatically you get low latency uh, for the data what it is being stored under the warm you can consider warm or hot for on this particular cache so then if you think that one year old data which you don't have frequent queries for that then you can move the data to the cold storage the beauty of this uh, on the adx is that data can be stored for forever so there are uh, so many requirements I come across that data should never be deleted that all they need to maintain the data forever for maybe the auditing purposes or logging purposes whatever the reason but they want to store it for forever. So in those cases the cold storage doesn't have any particular uh, retention period you can keep it uh, the way you want. And to give you the other example in the banking transactions, for example, one year old statements uh, are not that frequent. That kind of data can be actually moved to the cold storage so that you can save a lot of cost. Always cold storage cost is less compared to the warm or hot storage which is under the ADX. So whichever you think that six months old data that has little more frequency that can be moved to the warm storage or hot storage. The primary transaction data all can sit on your primary database, which could be your Azure SQL or Oracle or whatever the databases you are using, like Cosmos DB or DynamoDB, MongoDB, which of the database is using that can sit on the primary database. This is one way of uh, designing the archival architecture. The other option could be like uh, ADLS. Uh, for warm storage, we are still using ADX here, but for the cold storage, you can use uh, Azure Data Lake Stories. 
uh, in uh, many architectures, earlier architectures, people used to use ADLS. Even if you still go with the Microsoft uh, references architectures, they are still, uh, ha I mean, they still have a lot of architectures uh, with the ADLS on the uh, cold stories, whereas ADX with the warm stories. Uh, but if you talk to the Microsoft guys, they will definitely recommend uh, to have the both warm stories and cold stories on the ADX. Coming to the AD, uh, or more alternatives for the cold stories, you can even consider Snowflake or you can even uh, have a look on the Synapse Analytics of the Azure, uh, which is a replacement of the data warehouse. Coming back to the ADX uh, and ADLS combo versus ADX uh, solely. I recommend ADX because um, there is a KQ language on the ADX. Uh, by using that, you can query any time to the uh, warm storage or cold storage. The same queries can be used for any any type of uh, data retrieval. Whereas ADLS, you have to struggle a bit more. And few people were questioning me, why don't you use ADX for the transactional data as well if you have the updates to the data i don't suggest adx because uh, you have something called materialized view where you again you have to implement workarounds to update the data which is sitting on the warm storage or hot storage of the adx so it's a complicated process that is the reason i don't recommend adx for the transactional database better you have your own databases like azure sql uh, cosmos whatever you have but use the uh, ADX for the archival, not for the data, uh, data which has a frequent updates. So hope you got the clarity. Why should I go with the ADX? Uh, there are plenty of reasons uh, why I was recommending, but you can have your own evaluation and then make a decision. In case if you have different findings, please post it in the comments. That will be helpful for me and others as well. Thank you for watching my videos.